Hey, what's going on guys? I'm going to talk today about U.S. defector to North Korea, Charles Robert Jenkins. Charles Robert Jenkins is from North Carolina. Um, he defected when he was a sergeant in the U.S. Army. He was commanding a squadron and he did nighttime patrol and he told the squadron to wait for him. If he sees, a, uh, he's going to check and see if a road's clear and if it's clear, we'll head back to base. Well, he used that to cross into North Korea. He had an M14 rifle with him. He tied a white t-shirt around it, which was his surrender flag. Okay, Charles Robert Jenkins regrets his defection, okay? He admitted he did not man up to his problems like a soldier or a man should have. Um, he now lives in Japan with his wife, Hitomi. Um, his wife, Hitomi, was abducted from Sato Island, Japan, and brought to North Korea. Uh, and the reason North Korea kidnapped a lot of Japanese citizens was to train, um, so they could train North Koreans in the Japanese language train North Korean spies in the Japanese language. Well, he married his wife, Hitomi, uh, in North Korea, and he was eventually allowed to follow his wife to Japan when uh, Japanese Prime Minister Junichiro Koizumi came to North Korea. North Korea admitted to abducting uh, Japanese citizens and admitted some were still alive, and one of them was Hitomi, Charles Jenkins' wife. So, let's talk about that. I can talk about him, okay? He wrote a book called The Reluctant Communist. This, and he largely regrets his defection. He talks about how the rat, and they lived, the defectors did not live like the people in the countryside, but they still had a hard life, okay? Um, a lot of the rat, the, a lot of the rice had bugs in it. The, the, the rice the government gave to them had bugs in it. The vegetables were wormy, and then the, a lot of the meat, if there was any meat that was given to them, was spoiled. Now, when one time they cut the meat rations they had to them, this is in the book Reluctant Communist, and they so they gave them a hog. The government did give them a hog, but by the time they were ready to kill and butcher the hog, the government came, butchered the hog in front of them, and then took the took the hog. And one of the defectors was so mad, he called the organization dogs, basically, uh, and. That go he goes into details with a lot of that in his book, The Reluctant Communist. So don't listen to Joe Dresna, the documentary on Joe Dresna crossing the line. Charles Jenkins' book, The Reluctant Communist, provides a lot more details. And I have listened to Crossing the Line. I watched that documentary, and I've also read The Reluctant Communist. And the a lot of times they, they only had cold water. They didn't have hot water in their home, and usually the cold water didn't run, so they had to go out to the well. If they wanted drinking water, if they needed to take a take a bath or anything of that nature. And then sometimes during the winter when it was so cold and the water froze and there was no snow, um, the real possibility of, uh, of dying of thirst, it was a real possibility. Um, uh, eventually the government gave them Russian-made, uh, Russian-made water trucks came by, but they really were worried about dying of thirst because a lot of times the water did freeze over. There was no running water. Um, sometimes in the toilet, uh, with the toilets, you would see rats come out of them, just sick. And they didn't live as hard of an existence as some people in the countryside did, but they still had a very hard existence. So that is the stuff. And, and to this day, Charles Robert Jenkins suffers from panic attacks and insomnia. When he's in Sato Island, he's done interviews, numerous interviews, and he says he doesn't go out at night. He's worried that North Korea may be after him. So, in his book, The Reluctant Communist, he still admits to suffering from panic attacks and insomnia. So, anyway, hope everybody's doing well. Take care. God bless and bye-bye. Bye-bye.